and welcome back. I wanted to take a couple episodes here and really dig in deep into our engine itself. You know, the, the ramjet picture you see below, we have it sort of behind our detonation engine here, but going to the physics behind it at a little deeper level, it'll be a little more equations heavy on this. And to truly really get into, you know, how does the educting RDR work, rocket based combined cycle, but I wanted to start off at just honestly pure ramjet operations. So I included here the nice schematic picture of the ramjet. And then in this kind of cartoony configuration, I've got, I'm showing it here on the back. We have a detonation engine that's driving and pulling in air. And I've actually shown this at a supersonic stage. This is probably closer to, let's say our cruise stage. And so for, for this episode, I'm gonna talk about the RDRE being off. And this is now sort of steady state ramjet operations where we have a shock that is then, you know, missing the lip. And then you've got a couple other shocks and the whole thing is shocking down, adding pressure. And so if you want to start off looking at this from a TS diagram, right? You, in the end, you're talking about a system that is starting at zero. It is, is compressing up to say one. In fact, I have this at one compressing to two, that's fine. And then heat addition, three, and then our nozzle. And so a couple points on here, two, three, four, and I'm gonna call this three prime, All right? So the first thing on this is I am showing isentropic compression with a little lean to the right. So it's just slightly isentropic and that's intentional. We'll, we'll get into that in a second. But uh, instead of having a compressor doing this stage, because remember this is, this is at higher pressure, right? These are, these are lines of constant pressure here. Right. Uh, and then this temperature here usually would be set by the maximum temperature we want to have inside the ramjet, right? That will be more material dependent, heat transfer dependent. And so depending on the altitude, we may actually adjust how much fuel we're putting into the ramjet in order to maintain this temperature. And then three prime is what I would, I would then highlight here on the, the diagram in terms of this is where the nozzle is at. This would be that, that nozzle portion here where it is sort of sonic and then expanding out. Can I go back to the rocket, you know, rocket 101 lecture I was doing before. Okay, so um, we wanna look through just a couple of examples. And so if, let's say we're at 100,000 feet. Okay, I wrote down some of these things. So then, um, this might represent Mach 4. And the reason I'm doing that is this would, remember the combination of this is, is actually temperature. So, so this based on a 30 foot wing would result in a 900 degree Fahrenheit rough estimate. So, so that's how I'm choosing that Mach number and that altitude. Okay. And the pressures at that condition, the pressure in the atmosphere is pretty low, 0. 1.6 PSI. I'm going to do this whole thing in English units. You can do the conversion to Pascal if you're interested. And then the temperature is minus 51 Fahrenheit. Okay, so, so the air is cold, state one. And then it's coming through these shocks. Now, through a shock, mass is conserved, energy is conserved, um, momentum is, is conserved, but there may be some reacting forces on there. So it's not, you know, you can't just solve for your fluid variables doing that way. And then entropy is not conserved. And so I'm gonna come back to this diagram over here. And I want, to, I want you to think through what happens in a shock. And so like I said, I, I had this intentionally going through. So here might be pure isentropic, right? Now, if I said energy is conserved, uh, enthalpy and temperature are pretty related. I know for a real fluid, they're not, but just, just go for a second. And I wanna think through, let's say that going through my shock, I'm, I'm gonna have a temperature rise and it's, it's constant no matter what. And then what you're gonna see is the difference between an oblique shock or a set of, set of oblique shocks that may have a little bit of entropy gain, which is resulting in this pressure. Or if I had a lot of entropy gain, that would be represented going through say a normal shock instead of having these sort of angled shocks, just one solid hard shock would generate a lot more entropy. Well, I want you to note that that would then sit on a pressure line that's less, okay? And at higher speeds, that difference can add up. 
So if you look at the F-16, it just has a big old mouth on it. And so that's just a normal shock. It's not, it's not doing a system of oblique shocks. It's just one normal shock. Well, the F-16's top speed is, I don't know, 1.3, 1.4, 1.6, something like that. It's not, the difference between a normal shock and an oblique shock at that speed is not a big deal. Now take a look at the F-15 that has more of a top speed of you know, over Mach 2. Now it's, it is set up to handle a couple of oblique shocks. It's gonna get right a little bit better compression. And then particularly if you look at the SR-71, it had you know, this full on spike that was moving in and out to adjust. And that's likely what we'll end up having as well to harness that, right? In fact, at Mach 4, you, you know, the difference between these curves could be a uh, doubling in pressure, which is a lot to give up if you're you know, only trying to go through a normal shock. So yes, normal shocks are simpler, but that, that pressure gain is, is important um, for, for kind of the rest of the cycle, right? If you don't get enough pressure gain, then really this, this is where you're converting that heat that you've added by your fuel, this is where you're converting it into thrust. Again, three prime being the sonic point and then four being the exit, okay? The other point I wanna mention behind this is that the exit is important to be converging diverging nozzles, right? So we've drawn this as a converging diverging nozzle system. That's because, you know, this would be Mach 1 and this is a pretty low pressure. And so even though the pressure gain through the system here might be, so this would be P2 over P1, you might be sitting at 50 or 40, right? Depending on your shocking system. Uh, that's a high compression ratio. And so honestly, to get all the way back to atmospheric to where this is nice and straight, right? remember if it's, if it's underexpanded, it's less performance. If it's overexpanded, it's less performance. So if you're trying to get it nice and straight, then you do wanna have, um, you know, this might be something like Mach 3 uh, locally here. And then uh, what, that, what that entails though, and in order to fly through a whole bunch of different ranges, is usually this nozzle must be adjustable. And so this is, it's called a converging diverging nozzle, but specifically it's a nozzle that can change depending on the altitude and conditions in order to make sure you're getting Mach 1 here and that you're not over shocking it and having a ton of losses and then trying to maximize it. You, you might keep, you know, this, this diameter, whatever it is, would normally be held constant and you're just kind of adjusting the throat in order to get maximum performance. Um, and then the, the final thought here is just to remember that the thrust in the end, whatever the mass flow is, which is really set by the area up front. And so uh, it is the mass flow V exit minus V in. And again, that mass flow rate is rho one V one A one. It's, 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 it's that capture area and then times that difference. Now on the SR-71 system, uh, even in the F-15 system, there's a lot of bleed doors and things like this. Like, you actually have to dump some of the air sometimes because you the turbine can't handle enough of it. Uh, we don't have that in our conditions and on the benefit of the rocket-based combined cycle. Really, all of this air, we're not having to go do anything because it'll mix with a rocket engine and then it'll burn the ramjet. We're not having to do any uh, adjustment of that because of some turbine machinery that can't, that can't handle it. And so really, you know, we get to use all of that air and then we want to maximize the exit. That's that's this number here. That's in order to rate. Right, it's going to come from this maximum temperature that we set by burning their fuel because this is more materials dependent, and then going through uh, that exit. And so on the next segment, I'm going to deep now into the adduction portion here. I'll talk about what happens when this is not supersonic, and then we'll actually talk through when it's kind of in this mixed sonic state while we haven't turned it off yet, and go into that performance. See you then.